So the scenario is this. Um, if you have an annual subscription, right, it's a year between the, the payments for a particular subscriber, um, it's it's a good practice to remind them as their next payment is upcoming, right? If it's been 11 or 12 months since their last payment, uh, it makes sense to give them a couple of countdown reminders, uh, letting them know that their next payment is coming up, giving them the option to upgrade or downgrade or cancel or renew, right? So that's where we're going with this. Uh, there are a number of ways to handle this uh, using the native features in Infusionsoft or using some of the paid third-party tools. So the easiest way to handle this is um, just by setting up a, uh, a purchase goal, listing for a specific product, listing for that subscription, and listening for the specific subscription plan. So the annual plan in this particular scenario. And then once they purchase that, uh, you would move them into a sequence where we would start counting um, from that point of purchase. If we know it's a year till their next payment, uh, well, we can set up a timer to wait 48 weeks. Um, so a year is 52 weeks, right? So 48 weeks means there are four weeks uh, to go until their next payment. And then you could use an email just saying, hey, um, your payment is due in four weeks. Um, and, uh, you know, click here if you, whatever, don't want that to happen or just a, a courtesy notice or whatever, right? Um, and then you could do a, a, another one where you wait uh, two weeks after that and uh, you send a, uh, a two week reminder and a one week reminder or, uh, you know, whatever combination of, of reminders you need uh, as the rebill um, or renew date approaches. Okay. So that's how you could handle it. Now you may be wondering, can I, can I tell them when the uh, payment is going to be due. Can I mention, hey, here's the date it's going to be drawn. Uh, so uh, you can, but maybe not in the way that you were envisioning. Um, so Infusionsoft has merge fields for dates, right? Um, you can you know, merge in the date and the time, um, just the current date, the current time, etc. But what a lot of people don't realize is it also has date modifiers. So you can add additional modifications to those different merge fields to add or subtract time or change the way that it's formatted, okay? Um, and this is a, a relatively advanced feature, so it doesn't surprise me if this is, uh, you know, is, is news to you. It was certainly news to me when I first uncovered this. Um, so where I'm going here is uh, this one, right, allows us to add weeks to the current date. Uh, you can see it's, it's adding one week at this point. So if we open this email, and we say, uh, hey, your you know renewal date is coming up. Your payment is going to be withdrawn on. Um, I can merge in today's date plus weeks, um, and then I can change that to four, um, and then medium is the way that it's going to be displayed. So let's go ahead and preview. Today is April 11th for what that's worth. So um, if we preview this, that should say, uh, yeah, May 9th, which is four weeks from today, uh, 2018, and it includes the year and, and all of that. So um, so you, if you know that this email is going to go out four weeks before their payment is due, then you can use today's date, the day that the email is sent, plus four weeks to calculate when that payment is going to be due. Uh, and then the same thing here, you would do, uh, you know, two week reminder would be today's date plus two. So you can use these undocumented merge fields to, to modify that date and give them the reminder uh, as that approaches. Now, you would also want to have some sort of conclusion on this if they uh, cancel or uh, unsubscribe or opt out or, um, you know, they renew early or whatever, right? Like you would want to have uh, some sort of exit hatch because these reminders, as it gets closer, are only relevant if they are still active and have not re-upped, okay? So that's just an important caveat there. Now, um, that's all native, that's all built in. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, there are a few other ways to handle this. Um, so let's let's look at another example. Uh, rather than just doing the payment reminders uh, with the native features, uh, another way to do this would be by storing the um, payment date, payment date uh, in a custom contact field. So to do that, we would actually use set field value um, and we could do last payment date, uh, for example, and then the, use the date that they hit this. So uh, the purchase goal would add them to this sequence, um, and then this would obviously capture the date that they were added to this sequence. Um, now, that's going to be the date of their last payment. So we can't really use that uh, as, you know, to merge into emails and to say, 
um, hey, you've got another payment coming up. But what we could do is send the, re the same reminders that we, that we had been using. So we'll use our payment reminders. Um, but instead of using the uh, delay timers here, uh, we would use the um, field timer and we would work around the contacts last payment date. So here we go, contacts last payment date. And this would be, uh, you know, 48 weeks, 48 weeks uh, after the last payment date. Uh, and we would want to make sure we do use year from field rather than next occurrence. Um, and then this one would need to be, uh, you know, 50 weeks. So it's the exact same concept, uh, you know, 48 weeks after, 50 weeks after, it's just using the date from the field. And then you could use the same uh, merge fields uh, or modifiers on the date field uh, to tell them when it's going to be renewed. So that's just a different way of doing that. The reason that might be beneficial is because then you have the purchase date or the payment date stored against the contact record, which allows you to use it in searches or reports. Um, um, so there may be some benefit to having that against the contact record instead of only on the subscription. Um, okay, this would also, uh, you know, obviously you would need to have a mechanism for, for looping this uh, when they made a subsequent payment. Um, and so to do that, I would actually use uh, billing automation triggers uh, and we would say payment made, which would pull them out. Um, and then we would of course have to re-add them uh, with when the payment is made and update that payment date and then do the same reminders uh, in that looping sequence. So they would start when they purchased uh, and then the reminders would happen and once they pay, it would, it would start that process all over again. So uh, you could you could do it that way is, is another way to handle it. Now, if you are open to implementing or, or integrating a third party feature, um, there are a couple of tools that allow you to uh, use the date in a custom field and add or subtract time to it. Uh, one of which is the uh, plus this, uh, what's the date feature or date calculator. Yeah, w that, that feature with plus this. And I know MyFusion Helper has a similar uh, function. Um, I think Zapier does, Novak Solutions may as well. Uh, this just happens to be the one I'm most familiar with. But uh, the idea is once you capture the current uh, or last payment date is you would use one of those third party features uh, to then um, update that. So you would post to a third party system, recalculate that by adding one year to it or, or something like that. And then you could use that in the intervals as you, you would be counting down to. Uh, so it would be, you know, four weeks uh, before, oops, four weeks before the last payment date use year from field. Uh, and then this would be, uh, you know, two weeks before the last payment date use year from field. Uh, but the, again, th that is dependent on um, having some sort of third party tool to calculate what the next payment date is. So there you have it. There are three options. Uh, the first of which is, involves, you know, no custom fields, and it's really just using the date modifiers to give them a countdown. Uh, the second of which is counting uh, from the previous payment as you approach presumably the next payment. And then the third would involve a third party tool, uh, but you could count down to that payment and use field timers. Um, and you know the custom or the date modifiers to, to give them the exact date that that's going to be uh, taking place. So hopefully that gives you a few options to work with and uh, there's something in there that you can use uh, to, to give your subscribers reminders as they approach. Um, if you have existing subscribers for whom you want this process to work, you may have to manually export their uh, subscriptions with the start date and then move it to a uh, custom field using the modify existing records import. So that may, that may be a one-time thing that you need to do in order to get the existing subscribers uh, onto this schedule, but new subscribers, it should happen automatically. So hopefully that gives you what you need. Later.